The World Health Organization has declared the coronavirus as a global emergency as the outbreak continues to spread outside of China. The World Health Organization Director General Tedros Adhanom has announced the decision after a meeting of its emergency committee amid mounting evidence of the virus spreading to some 18 countries. The World Health Organization is concerned that the virus could spread to countries with weaker health systems. And as we mentioned earlier, Ghana says it is on high alert in case we record any of those cases. Now, police in Mexico are questioning 10 guards at a prison in the capital, Mexico City, after three high-profile inmates escaped. The three, including a, master, a, a man suspected of being the financier for the sons of jailed drug lord Joaquin Guzman, walked through five gates before driving away in an official car. Three guards have reportedly confessed to helping the inmates escape. Also, a man has been found guilty of trying to steal a copy of Magna Carta from Salisbury Cathedral. Mark Royden, 47, from Kent, used a hammer to try to smash through the protective case around the 805-year-old document but failed to take it away. Jurors at Salisbury Crown Court also found him guilty of criminal damage. So those are the major stories making headlines here in Ghana and around the world. Time now for the big one. All right, so we're going to that all-important issue having to do with whether or not, as a country, we need a new voters register. The Eminent Advisory Committee meeting with the Electoral Commission and the Interparty Advisory Committee, IPAC, on the compilation of a new voters register ended inconclusively. Parties involved maintained their positions with the NDC-led Interparty Resistance Against a New Voters Register insisting it will go ahead on its series of demonstrations. Godfrey Tana, my colleague, sat through the meeting and has the rest of the story. For almost six hours, the Eminent Advisory Committee, the Interparty Advisory Committee, the Electoral Commission and some civil society organizations were locked up in a meeting on a disagreement over the compilation of a new voters register for the December 7 polls. Participants were given the opportunity to make presentations on their positions after the Electoral Commission, through a presentation, justified this reason to compile the new voters register. Some representatives, after the meeting, raised some concerns. The uh, committee of eminent persons afforded opportunity for all political parties to be heard. They made a presentation. There was only one snag. Independent presidential candidate of a previous election, who, in our opinion, did not have any status as far as IPAC is concerned, was allowed to make a presentation. While civil society organizations, which have always played a very important role in our electoral reform, were denied opportunity to make a presentation. That one, we think, uh, uh, is, is, is very irregular. The Electoral Commission did their presentation, both technical and financial reasons, uh, presentation. At the end of the day, what has come to light is that none of the issues that were raised spoke against the data of the Electoral Commission. So as far as we are concerned, all the other things that the Electoral Commission want to do can be done without compiling a new data. That's all. Because we ask the Electoral Commission technical person whether the data is credible or not credible. Mm -hmm. And you could not tell us that the data is not credible because the Electoral Commission has conducted elections with this data as, as late as uh, December last year. And for that matter, we believe that all the other things that they want to do can be done without necessarily going back to touch the data through a new registration. 
leader of the All People's Congress, APC, Hassan Ayarga, insisted the parties against the voters register will continue with these demonstrations. We'll go on the Why are you doing that? You because because I, I, we, they don't have a proper reason. You cannot. You have to convince people that yes, of course, the new voter register is not credible. The national chairman of the People's National Convention, Bernard Mona, says the EC's timing for the processes leading to the elections is dangerous. If you tell people that your register will be compiled and available on the 8th of November and you are a participant in elections, what it means is that you are taking more than enough risk because 8th November to 7th December is just one month. So if there is any hitch, what are you going to do? Deputy Minister for Local Government and Rural Development, Obi Amwan, disagrees. Then the CI says that within 21 days of completing the exercise, the parties will have the register. Now, we are going to make sure that they comply with what is in the CI. We are not going to say that they can give us any date. We want to make sure that the date will give us complies with what is in the register, uh, in the CI. Are we okay with that? Communication director of the NPP, Boabian Samoa, said the NPP has always maintained this position. At this point in time, this is about a number of political parties not wanting the register, which is the impression that which is the impression that the NDC has created. That the NDC and the coalition of political parties do not want the register. If that is the question we are answering, that today the question has been answered effectively and affirmatively yes for a new register because 10 political parties said they wanted a new register according to the 2016 independent presidential candidate joseph oseyabua the aim of the opposition parties is to cause trouble we are represented at ipac as independent candidate association that i led okay that was the hope we've been part of ipac meeting we speak, we've been contributing. And so when the issue was raised over here, that was another form of distraction. So everything, the strategy that they brought here was just to distract. The Eminent Advisory Committee, uh, the Electoral Commission and the Interparty Advisory Committee, uh, from all indication, uh, there have not been a consensus as to whether the Electoral Commission to go ahead to compile a new voter register. But the Eminent Advisory Committee will be uh, presenting the advice uh, after the meeting to the Electoral Commission uh, in deciding or telling them exactly what they believe should be done. From the uh, Coconut Grove Hotel here in Accra, Godfrey Tanam for TV3 News. All right, so we're staying on this subject matter a while longer because, unfortunately, there was a stalemate. Most of us were thinking that right after the meeting, then we'll get to know whether we are going to get the new register or not. David Agbe is the executive director of the Ghana Institute of Governance Security and uh, sat through the meeting. He's joined us in studio to help us at least find out what really happened. What led to the fact that we, as a people, or the, those that were gathered in the room, were unable to come to a final decision? Was it because already they had entrenched positions? Yeah, Martin, thank you so much. Yes, um, I think that they all came in with an attitude that they are going to state their position very clear. And the let's give thanks to the moderators of the program, um, Justice Amy Short and um, Pamabakal, and the profound professor, Emmanuel Asante. Mm. I think all the eminent you know, committee members did a very good job. They allow every political party to make a presentation. It was only the civil society organization that was not really allowed because this is an IPAC meeting between political parties and electoral commission. So okay. understandably, we were not allowed to make a presentation. But every political party came in with the attitude that they are going to state their point strongly. Mm. And they were allowed to state their views strongly. And therefore, I must say that coming in with their entrained position is not something that we have not seen before. Okay. Everything that we are talking about is power to be able to govern this country. Mm. And anything that comes 
with political power, political legitimacy, it comes with some of these but, confusions. But from, from your, um, for, I mean, having sat through the meeting, were you convinced, and was it that the, uh, the inter-party committee that are resisting the compilation of a new register understood what was said, but because they have just made their mind that they are not going to allow a new vote, voters register to be put together, they you know, stood their ground on that? Not at all. I think that the Electoral Commission, represented by the, the IT consultant, Dr. Oforieje, mm. was allowed to speak almost about one hour. After that, then um, Mr. M. Short allowed the political parties to also come and speak for 10 minutes, a maximum 15 minutes. You know, Mr. Mark Menu, for instance, he spoke for 12 minutes. Mm. Honorable John Sesuidun Ketia came in. He spoke more than 12 minutes. He even pleaded for more extra time. time because he believes that he has legitimate you know, concerns. And, and, and so the ground rule was that if you are making a good point and your point is solid enough, MSL said that he could allow you a to grace go. period of time. Okay. So he spoke extensively and also allowed his IT a person, expert, Griffiths, mm. Boatin, to also, you know, come in. He also spoke extensively more than 10 minutes. Mm. And then after that, many political parties, Eagle Party also came in with their consultant, mm. uh, Dr. Uh, George, uh, um, George Emmanuel Boatin, you know, he also came in, not George uh, Boama, he also came in, spoke as extensively and said that as far as he's concerned, Having listened to the electoral commission IT person, it looks as if the IT person really do not really understand modern system of IT management mm. because all the things well, that he said, processes. Uh, electoral processes, and so many of the things that he said, technically, he got it wrong. Okay, but uh, going forward, and for lack of time, we want to find out, as a governance analyst, what is the way forward? The way forward, as to speak now, I think that what the eminent body needs to do is to recommend to the electoral commission to re-engage the political parties the more. Mm. Because in dispute settlement, the more you engage the, the, the people who are entangled with the conflict, mm. they tend to, at a certain point in time, tone down a bit. So the eminent body needs to really engage the electoral commission more and indeed. make sure that the political parties are engaged enough. And especially the IT people, the IT personnel that came, I think that Griffiths was fantastic. Dr. George Buama was a very solid person. Mm. And also UFP political party, uh, one Emmanuel Mensa uh, Buama, he also came in well prepared with his level of understanding of IT. So I would recommend that the eminent body need to really engage the technical people who understand the, um, the language, okay. the modern system of IT and where we are going. Don't forget that IT also comes with, with international practices and conventions. So when they are able to engage those people and then also assemble some of the critical views as far as the political parties are concerned, okay. somebody like Mr. McMenu, a very solid person who has been involved in the electoral practices for okay. so many years, and then... Honorable John C. S. Katia, he has the institutional memory. I think that with all the presentation that was done, he has all the institutional memory more than any of them, you okay. know, seated so there. At least so the some of those people to need to more. be listened to. And so, therefore, they can be able to table the issue okay. and be able to deal with it chronologically such that some of these things that we want to prevent, I mean, the disastrous we'll consequences of electoral we'll have to violence here for now, could be avoided. Least. Okay. David Agbe is uh, the executive director of the Ghana Institute of Governance and Security. Um, uh, he sat through that all-important meeting.